All right. So, um, and we've got Lori here, right? Yes. There you are. <laughs> Hello. So let's let's start like we did last time and do uh, like a, a quick what's something that's working like what are you experiencing that's that's going well and it doesn't even have to be exactly related <laughs> you know it just it's just good to do that if you do have something that's related and I bet you guys do but um, it could be anything. I'll go ahead and yeah. start. Um, I just can't believe how great I feel um, just from head to toe. Um, it really has been, you know, pretty dramatic. Wow. So, so you know, I don't know. I, I'm just so stoked that I was, that you were so flexible and <laughs> could deal with me from many miles away and that you know, uh, again, everything was laid out in a way that, you know, I could do it and I did it. So anyway, I have what, four more days? Today's Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three more days. And then I'm mm -hmm. done with three weeks. So, Yay. Yeah. Week two was awesome. Um, I have never not felt the non-hunger pains. So three meals that Kachari, Kachari? No, Kachari. Kitchen. Yes, three meals a day. Um, you know, it was so satisfying, so filling. Um, I ate far less than I'd ever eaten. And I, you know, ate when I was hungry and I didn't eat. Sometimes I didn't actually eat dinner because I just wasn't hungry. So I thought, okay, yeah, don't need to eat. But um, anyway, so anyway, it's a, it was a good process. So awesome. and next, next time I'm excited to go to the next step <laughs> yeah and it's just yeah, going deeper <laughs> so. did you did you do the oleation I did yeah 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 and you and did... that last thing that I certainly couldn't pronounce the that laxative thing yeah which I was very uh -oh. afraid of but I I did it and it was fine so yay I was awesome. thinking that it was going to be more like you know, pre prepping for a colonoscopy and it wasn't. <laughs> so maybe in your notes, you could just say, it's not like that. <laughs> right. And it really depends on how much you take, you know, of whatever, whichever you're using, mm -hmm. which one did you use? Like the, I did the Epsom salt and the lemon okay. and the olive oil. Yeah. Okay. And then really did you, did you wake up in the morning or like in the middle of the night or just in the morning? In the morning. But, you know, what I felt, which I thought was really interesting, um, I felt just movement through my whole abdomen. <laughs> I just could feel mm -hmm. something and then woke up in the morning and eliminated and, you know. Just the one was, time? Um, a couple more during the morning, but okay, it was, um, yeah, pretty pretty simple so the pr that process is the toxins are I mean when you're eliminating daily the toxins are leaving you or only until you do the oleation and the that last. yeah so to some degree like we're detoxifying our, you know hopefully our bodies are going through a natural detoxification process daily a little bit but it mm -hmm. really depends on how often we're eating, like how, how much time are you giving in between meals? Because the way that a lot of people eat is kind of constant. And so oh, you're, right, you don't right, get, right. get a break. Mm -hmm. So that's one problem. Another problem is eating too late at night or mm -hmm. eating when we're not hungry, because mm -hmm. when the fire is not really strong, mm -hmm. it doesn't tend to work really well. And then we get a lot of AMA built up. As far as like toxins in the tissues too, we've got like just a lot of environmental stuff that oh. you might not even have any control over. And so, you know, over time for your whole life, those things just build up in the fat tissues. So like, I mean, there could be stuff from when you were a kid that's still stuck there. Um, no, I was a pesticide kid. I grew up in an orange grove. So yeah, mm. <laughs> they were spraying malathion regularly oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, right outside my bedroom. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
So, so like, that's another reason why it's important to keep doing things like this and to, you know, keep these habits, but also keep cleansing, you know, and doing Mm -hmm. specifically the oleation and the purge Mm -hmm. because, Mm -hmm. um, it's really beneficial. Yeah. I'm so excited for you that you've had, um, that you feel so different. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that I, um, I mean, I knew that I, didn't really like gluten or gluten didn't like me. Um, Mm -hmm. um, and it just, you know, I'm kind of back going back to a regime where I just don't, I can avoid it. They have so many options and I'm not a real Mm -hmm. bread person anyway, but, um, you know, and I do, you know, the bloat because after I eat mostly lunch and dinner, I just would bloat, you know, Mm -hmm. historically. So, you know, that went away. So, anyway <laughs> um yeah and lots of energy I had I had energy so yay yeah so it was a good so I hope everybody cool. has a good experience yeah <laughs> so that's it's a lovely. commitment for sure <laughs> yeah yeah it is no it I'm is. not going to be able to join you at the pub tonight because I'm <laughs> yeah <laughs> What about you, Vicki? Do you want to share some something that's working? Um, I'm it- liking every part of this, you know, the oil pull, everything. Um, and I have, I was out yesterday, I had acupuncture and um, people that I see say, wow, you're looking really good. I'm like, well, thank you. (laughs) You know, like, I mean, in my face, my husband thinks my face is thinner, but um, (laughs) yeah. And I feel great except for, I do get like in the morning when I wake up, I'm not hungry for a long time, Mm. but after I eat my first meal, I get hungry between the meals. And at nighttime I'm hungry. I go to bed a little hungry. Mm -hmm. And um, at first I wasn't really sleeping that I slept great last night because right before I went to bed, I actually took about a tablespoon of, of the, um, the stuff that we're eating, the kitri, Mm -hmm. I just to kind of have something in my stomach. I felt like maybe I was waking up because I was hungry. Yeah. Okay. So, So what time were you eating your dinner? Well, uh, about six. Okay. And, and then, then what we, time are you going to bed? Well, we're, we're late people. So like I've been going to bed later than this, but since this cleanse, I'm going to bed around nine. Okay. But I'm hungry before I eat. And then after I eat, I feel really satisfied. But about an hour later, I'm like, oh, I, I've got hunger pains. But then, like I said, I wake up in the morning and I don't need to eat for a while. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah. yeah are you when you have your um when you feel hungry an hour after you eat at night what do you do do you drink water I'm drinking water like yeah okay and that when you let's say an hour after you eat you're hungry do you drink like a big glass of warm water and then I sip feel- on it okay it does make me feel better but the, you know, I'm aware that I'm hungry. Yeah. And then and I then go to bed. Were you feeling like that in, in like the first part in the first week? Were you, would you feel hungry after you ate? No. Okay. And you were eating around the same time. Uh-huh. And like, were you eating meat or were you? Oh no, I was just okay. eating the veggies. It could be, and it's possible that it's the fat that, you know, like maybe if you were eating veggies, if they were like, if it was a salad, maybe there was olive oil or something. And if it was like sauteed vegetables, maybe they had some ghee or something on them. It could be that that fat, it sticks with you longer. Mm -hmm. Um, And that that's not happening right now because you're doing the oleation. So you're staying away from fat. Um, I mean, you could try eating a bigger portion of the kitchery at night. Um, and, and then I, I would also say, 
probably your body's kind of retraining and, and this week two part is a little bit different, you know, anyway, because of that whole, not, you know, specifically not eating fat for the rest of the day. Um, but it's good that you feel good the rest of the day. And, and so in the morning, when you, when you wake up, you're not hungry at what point do you, do you get hungry before you eat that first time? Yeah. I start to feel that hunger feeling and then I eat. And what time is that usually? Um, probably 10 because I'm doing all the, I'm drinking the warm water and, you know, so around 10, probably I eat my first meal. Okay. Okay. And what time are you waking up? Seven. Okay. So like three hours later. Yeah. And then, so what time are you eating lunch? Probably about one or probably about one. Okay. So only, so that's only a three hour window. And then, but then you eat, but then you have a bigger window. Okay. I'm just trying to think like, one thing that you could do if you wanted to eat an earlier breakfast is you could take a little, um, I would say, so there's an herbal blend called Trichitu, um, but it's probably too late to get that really quick. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but you could do, you take fresh ginger, this is like an Agni Kindler thing. You take like fresh ginger, make a slice of it. So it's, you know, like, um, I don't know, not, not thick, thick, but not like paper thin either, but you're slicing a piece of ginger. So the whole piece, like, you know, once you slice it is, and then, um, and then you'd squeeze a tiny bit of lime juice on it and then sprinkle a little bit of Himalayan or some kind of, you know, whole sea salt on it Mm -hmm. and then eat that like 20 minutes before, like, say, um, say you wake up and you do your water and you do your oleation or you other way around. And then maybe, um, maybe at eight o'clock or something, eat that. And then you might start to feel hungry earlier. If you do that, it's an Agni Kindler okay so 8 a.m i would eat that Ooh, mm-hmm. how is that to eat isn't it pretty is it spicy it's a little spicy and a little yummy i love ginger so i do too so i'm gonna try that yeah okay yeah try, and, and then and then wait and eat until and then mm-hmm. wait a little bit after that until i'm yeah hungry. i would say i mean you might feel hungry in 20 minutes because hopefully it'll help stimulate a little bit and if it if it doesn't then, I mean, you don't want to eat if you're not hungry and unless it's, unless you're doing something like very, very light, you know, to, to kind of start to like eating a, an apple or, you know, something like that, that's just going to help stimulate because it's light and easier to digest, but giving you something for your body to go, Ooh, so, you know, you might try the Agni Kindler and then 20 minutes later, if you're like, not, you're still like, nope, nothing, no hunger here, <laughs> then you could try eating like something small if you wanted to, like, you know, like a piece of an apple or something, or you could right. just wait until you feel hunger. But that's okay. a good thing to do before meals to help bump up your Agni if you're feeling like it's low or, you know, you're not feeling super hungry before meals. Yeah. Except for that's the problem. I'm like in the morning, I'm not, but I'm do, I do yoga. I just have this beautiful morning to myself. Yeah. And then I eat my, my first meal. Uh And then as the day goes on, I'm just, I'm, I'm hungry. Like I have Mm -hmm. to eat more. Yeah. And, And at night it's like hunger. Yeah. Like, and so how much are you eating at night when you eat your, your six o'clock meal or your, I eat like a cereal bowl, you know, mm-hmm. with it. Um, and I feel totally full when I eat. Yeah. 
And then at lunch, how much do you eat? Same amount? Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. And and so like it, interesting that at lunch, your digestive fire is, is higher anyway, and you're eating around one o'clock and you're able to not eat again for five hours. But then at night you eat at six and then you're hungry an hour later. I would say that that's probably a, a training like that. You're going to need to retrain yourself. Okay. Because you use or, or to eat, to eat and then not expect food an hour later, because you're probably, maybe your old habit was different, or maybe it's the fat again, but I would play around with that, like how much you're eating. And, um, yeah, that's good that you're doing yoga before you eat your first meal though. Yeah. I think the mornings I can do a long time and I go to bed hungry, but Mm -hmm. when I wake up, I have two, three hours before I really want to eat. Yeah. So I don't know. It's interesting, but Mm -hmm. if I'm totally hungry, I mean, do the ginger, but, um, what I did last night, tell me if this was a horrible thing. I actually got a strawberry and just cut it up into four or five pieces and kind of ate that slowly. And it kind of satisfied me slowly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like every bite. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't necessarily say for you, you know, because I'm not in your body, but that doesn't sound horrible. Um, I would say finding something, you know, something that you could, that could be a fix, like finding something that would be just like a little bit. The only thing is, it's not good for you to, I mean, that's technically snacking. So Mm -hmm. because you're still, you're still trying to digest the other stuff. So that's going to, especially fruit is not a great idea to put on top of that. Um, but I see your dilemma of feeling that way. I wonder what if you, I mean, you're already going to bed earlier than you normally would. I'm not sure. I would like maybe what if you incorporated another vegetable with the kitchery at night? Yeah, you know, I, like, I could do that. I wonder if that would be helpful. Like, um, you know, some asparagus or something that would give you something else. You know, it's not, it's still not going to be still not going to be fat, but a vegetable would be better and eating, eating more at that time would be better. But I do think it's a training, you know, it's like, I think it's a little bit psychological and Mm -hmm. like, or not just psychological, but you know, like, I'm not trying to say that it's all in your head, but it's like that pattern somehow, Mm -hmm. like, because, because if you eat, you shouldn't be hungry an hour later you know, if you're eating well, and then if you drink water, when you think you're hungry, cause that is a common thing, you know, like, Oh, I feel like I'm hungry. Um, because I don't think the mung beans are probably going through you that fast. You know, that's mm-hmm. what, how's the digestion going with the trifolo? Well, you know, last night was the first night I took it. Was I supposed to be doing that the first week also? No, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, and I had one day, day before, so yesterday I didn't eliminate at all, which is rare for me. Mm-hmm. So last night I took it and I did have a bowel movement first thing when I woke up. Okay. So I guess it's going good. Good. Um, let's see. But I only took one. Yeah. Okay. Good. And that's, t- that can be typical that you, um, mung beans or like that kitchery does that, you know, like makes it a little bit harder to digest. Plus you're going to not to digest, but to um, have a bowel movement and you're not having as much fiber now as you were. Mm-hmm. Um, so doing the triple at night, you know, before bed is a good, is a good thing. And that's good if one is working for you. And then what was I going to say about, and evening thing 
Let's see. Hold on one. Something popped into my head that my kid was in front of me trying to get my attention and I'm trying to ignore him. And now I've got layers of things going on. Hold on one second and let me see if he needed anything important, probably not. Well, Lori, it's kind of nice to get to know you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, likewise. I know. Yay. I've got to come back to them and visit. Yeah, you should. I have okay. a brother who lives there. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, so trying to think of what ginger, I thought of. This fresh ginger, I would do that when I'm hungry. Is that what you said? No, that is to help you get hungry in the morning. Okay. So that's it. It's an Agni kindler. It kindles okay. your Agni. So you want to have it about 20 minutes before, like, that's why I was saying, like, if you want to try to have your breakfast earlier, but be hungry, you could try to have that, you know, say at eight o'clock or something, and then see if by eight 30, you're actually hungry. Okay. Um, Mm, trying to, I'm still trying to think of what that thought was. I think it was something, it was a thought for you, something to incorporate or try in the evening. Oh, right. Okay. So another, have you tried, um, do you have on hand cumin, coriander, and fennel? Yes. So those three things, like that is often, it's just a good tea like you make, you use cumin, coriander, and fennel in equal portions, proportions, and um, you can boil it a little bit, or you can just steep it depending on what form your herbs are in. If they're in, um, if they're seeds, what I like to do is like just bang them up a little bit with like a mortar and pestle, and then um, and then steep them in boiling water, or you can simmer them for a little while, and then you strain it off and drink the tea that it's, it's helpful with digestion, um, in general. So that could be a good thing for you to sip in the morning too. Like if you're still not hungry, but in the evening, it also has flavor. So it's not, it's not going to have the, um, like any substance like food does, but it's got that savory flavor that feels like you're, you know, taking in something like, okay. if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, I guess I, I don't have fennel, but I have fen, fen Greek or something mm -hmm. like that. Is Would that work? No, it's specifically those three things. Um, okay. I'll, I'll but they have some. it, they have it, like you can get a, a pretty good little bag of it in um, at natural grocers in the spice okay. section. Mm -hmm. So that could be just an idea. Yeah. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah, but keep me posted. Feel free to ask, you know, anything about it or, you know, troubleshoot a little bit. If you weren't in week two, I could give you other things to do for sure, but that would kind of um, like doing some kind of an evening tonic if it were just, you know, a normal week, but then that would require you in taking fat. So that's why I'm not, um, not suggesting that. Okay. Right All now. Right. So yeah, just like, just look at it and remember everything's a little bit of an experiment. And so let's see like where it goes <laughs> okay. and, and how you can play around with things. Um, it could also have to do with the fact that, so your breakfast and lunch are close together, but your lunch and dinner are much further apart than you're used to. So having just not had a lot for five hours and then, and then have, you know, having that last meal and your body used to also said you're used to staying up later. So your body might like, just, it's in that pattern of thinking like, you know, maybe I need something else. Like 
you know, or I know yeah. I'm going to be up this long, so I better put something else in there. <laughs> right. And I'm but if you could used yeah. to staying up later and snacking, which yeah. I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's definitely, I think those habits that you're transitioning from right now, you know, have play a role, but also the whole piece of with lunch and dinner, like breakfast, lunch and dinner spacing. Like if you could, if we can get you to eat earlier in the morning and get you more comfortable with a bigger window there and then um, see, just see what happens. And if you start to notice like, wow, I'm really hungry and you know, drink, drink a significant amount of water. Like the sipping is good throughout the day, but an hour after you eat or an hour before you eat is a good time to have like, you know, a good warm cup of water, like just drink it. And then if you still feel hungry, like in between meals, go for a walk, you know, something like just to move your mind out of like your belly. Okay. Yeah. Good <laughs> yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, so one of the things as we, one of the things to talk about with this, with this part is, is the idea of, you know, going forward, what does that look like? You know, what, once you're past this whole cleanse, what are you setting yourself up for success there too, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that we we're not going to expect that we're going to do everything perfectly all of the time, or that we're going to, you know, be very rigid. But the idea is that we're resetting your digestion to the point where you are hungry before meals at a consistent time each day, and you're not snacking anymore. So you're giving your body that, that time to really digest and the fire to grow again for the next meal. So that if we do that, it's okay if we, you know, as long as it's not the norm, it's okay if we make bad choices every once in a while, because your Agni can handle it at that point, but it can't handle it when that's the norm because the Agni gets very low. So it's really important that we have that digestive fire, that we build it, that we hang on to it, that we use it as a gauge you know, about whether to eat or not to eat or what to eat. Um, so having those, like a lot of these habits that, you know, the average American might not be used to having <laughs> are really good going forward. Um, like the meal spacing. And um, so are, do you guys have thoughts about that? Is there anything you want to troubleshoot going forward, like how to, you know, how to carry on or what habits you want to carry on, what you think is realistic? I think the eating early is something I really have to work on. Um, mm -hmm. We had um, with the longer summer days, I mean, we'd eat, we'd go, go, go until nine o'clock and then eat. So mm -hmm. we're, we're not there yet because it's, we've had a really... <laughs> wet spring and it has been <laughs> that we haven't been uh, able to be outside that much to recreate so yeah. um and then I really was very tr trying so hard to eat before six but that still was a challenge for me to eat mm -hmm. by six mm -hmm. um it like at the worst it crept to seven and then sometimes um but most of the time but I I also liked eating the larger lunch um that made sense to me mm -hmm. and um so my former habits were grabbing a cup of coffee and Vicki you say you know you weren't hungry well I had my coffee and I didn't eat until bre breakfast until like 10 or 11 especially when I was working so boy I was really off of whack then you know and then just starving. Um, one of my tendencies also was uh, I have not really been that interested in food. It hasn't, it's not like a priority to, mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't in my life. And so I forget to eat, mm -hmm. get really busy and active and I was just not eat. Well, then 
time you ate, I ate, I was absolutely starving. So then it's binge eating because, and then I'd eat too much, too fast. And so this whole process has really calmed that whole routine down. So that has been really good. And again, feeling much better with all of that. So I'd like to continue, you know, with those yeah. habits. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if, I mean, I suppose I'll have a cup of coffee again, because I did, you know, formerly love it, love it, love it. I, mm -hmm. you know, haven't craved it at all. And same with the alcohol, which yeah. I'm thrilled about. Mm -hmm. I'm thrilled about. So I think that I've got both of those aspects of the day under under control mm -hmm. uh, and so I you know I think more moderation is the best but um you know, if I guess I feel like a cup of coffee then I yeah will enjoy it and yeah I think both of those things coffee and alcohol can be a slippery slope so it's like it, you know for I would find myself for years and years, I would go through periods where I drank coffee every day, a lot, you know, every day. I mean, not a lot of coffee, but it was, just, it was right. every day without yep. fail. Yep. 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 Um, yep. And then I would get to a certain point where I like, I knew my body was saying, stop, you know, like this, this isn't good for you. Like you're eventually I would start to get sick or something like, or I would notice like a tickle in the back of my throat. And I'm like, Oh, if I don't stop drinking coffee, I'm going to, I'm going to get sick. I'm going to get a cold. I'm going to get like a sore throat or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I would stop and then I would stop for just a while. And then I would be like, Oh, I can have coffee again. And, and I always had this hope that I could just have a little bit of, you know, like not daily, but that I could just do it every once in a while. But it was never, that was never the case. Um, <laughs> it was, so then, so then I would be back on again for like mm -hmm. months. And then, you know, so it was always this like love hate relationship. Um, until like I finally, at some point I finally kind of broke up with coffee and now, now I can do it every once in a while. I just have mm -hmm. to be careful. And when I do, I, I generally have half caffeine. Like I'll make it at home or if I go out and get a coffee drink, I'll say half caffeine. Mm -hmm. And then I just don't do it every day so right. that I stay. Mm -hmm. But another thing that's important about drink coffee drinking is that you don't do it first thing in the morning. Cause it really, it throws off your digestion yeah. and it throws yeah. off your digestive fire. Um, it's just, it's dehydrating. It's not yeah. the thing you want to do first thing in the morning. So mm -hmm. If you could have it after having something like, mm -hmm. um, like one of the things that I used to do was, okay, bring it in. Sorry. So see, it says tear here. And then you, right, like that. And then that's it. Um, <laughs> It throws me off when that happens. What was I talking That's okay. About? You're a mom first. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I was, when I was getting, trying to get out of, cause I would always look forward to it first thing, you know, I'd have mm -hmm. my water, but then I'm like, mm, my coffee. Mm -hmm. So the next step was have a smoothie. Like I would, I would have a smoothie before the coffee, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. like it wasn't, so then I had something on my stomach and mm -hmm. something alkaline, you know, mm -hmm. and had greens and good things on my stomach and then have the coffee. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have to, if, or if you decide, let's not say have to, cause if you have to, there's <laughs> right. a problem already, right. <laughs> but, but if you decide that you're going to have coffee, just not having it on an empty stomach, having it after you've had an intelligent choice you know, like something that your body wants, mm -hmm. you know, so that, or like with a meal, you know, mm -hmm. if you like, you go out with friends and have a cup of coffee with your meal, like that's going to be better than if you had it on an empty stomach. Um, it's funny, like with alcohol, similarly, you don't want to have it on an empty stomach. Um, and it's also better for you in like the long run, if you were to have it at lunch, 
which is not, which is right. not the thing that people do, but no. um, <laughs> be, because, because you have a chance to like get it out, you know, before you go and lay down in bed. Yeah. 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 So yeah. like having that shot of sugar basically is, you know, is not a great thing to do in the evenings, but everything with moderation, you know, like it's not to say you could never or should never do that. Um, right. Another person that I follow, one of the things that he talks about doing is if you're gonna have alcohol at all, he, he takes um, activated charcoal before and after. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, I think he also takes glutathione when he does that, just because you're just helping your body to detox those things out. Mm-hmm. What does he mm-hmm. take? What is this called? is Dave... Asprey, the guy who, um, he's a really cool guy. He wrote Bulletproof several mm. years back. He's the like, pe- he came, became famous. People started to know him for Bulletproof Coffee, right. which is okay. the idea With of, the, you know, yep. drinking the ghee, ghee and the coffee. Yeah. 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 Ghee and coconut mm-hmm. oil in your mm-hmm. coffee. And, um, he just like has done a lot of, he had really terrible health. Like at one point, like he, he like could have already died, but he, <laughs> he like had, he, he had a crisis, a health crisis. And he ended up figuring out all of these cool biohacks, you know, where like, oh, if you do this with your coffee, like it's not actually so bad for you. Or like now he's, he's got a brand of coffee that he's like manufactured so that it's way better for you somehow. I don't even know. I haven't looked into that, but just different things so that he does he's a cool guy to to follow because there's a lot he knows a lot about the science of things and the he talks about the mitochondria which is really important for us to like have healthy abundant mitochondria (laughs) because those are the powerhouses of your cells um and so that's where your energy comes from and anyway so he he's like really studied that stuff specifically and Mm -hmm. and he's Mm -hmm. older so he's like you know just all into aging well um but that's what he does he takes activated charcoal before and after drinking and then Mm -hmm. also some glutathione to help um detox um Yeah. So like being clear about, you know, what habits you think you can do and moving forward, like, and the importance of it, the meal spacing is really important. That's not Mm -hmm. something that's really typically honored in, you know, the American diet (laughs) culture. Mm -hmm. Like, so, um, and then, like you said, having lunch, the biggest meal of the day, eating an earlier dinner in the summer, when you're way more active and the sun is out longer, you can get away with a little more like eating a little later. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, it, it's like a different timeline, but this, the sun does have some effect on, on us in that way. I mean, a big effect. Yeah. 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 And then the, the other thing is like knowing when you, when you take this as like I talked about in the beginning, like that you're on a path with this and it's not just a, you know, Oh, I'll do this and then I'll get off. Like you just, you know, and then it's like a stepping on a merry-go-round or something. And then you just go back to normal life. It's, it's more like, hopefully all of this touches you in a way that you experience like, oh, wow, my body is capable of feeling a lot better than it was. And who knows how much more, you know, even after this, like, that's not necessarily like, you can feel really great after a cleanse, but maybe after the fall cleanse and the next spring cleanse and, you know, like, or, or continuing, even just taking these habits and continuing on with these habits for a year, what would that feel like? You know, Mm -hmm. hopefully like just continuing to feel better and better and better. Um, a lot of times people don't recognize that there's a direct link between how and what we eat (laughs) with how you think, how your brain works. And then also like your body, how your body, like your joints and your muscles feel that can have a very big impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So over time also, you know, a very big impact in a positive Mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I wanted to do was a little exercise with you guys. And um, 
I, and last time I mentioned already that the, um, that other worksheet that's separate, that's the, I think it's called my evolution or something like that. I forgot what personal evolution. I can't remember. Anyway, that's a good thing to constantly kind of be tuned into and looking back on. But, um, so let's do this little exercise. You're going to like get comfortable in a seat or where, you know, whatever seat you're in, get even in your hips as much as possible. And if you're, if you can put your feet flat on the floor and feel the floor, you know, sit in a way, like when you sit down, sometimes you have a tendency to sit and round the lower back. So you want to kind of pull out your butt behind you and get right up on your sitting bones so that your spine has a, a natural fluidity to it a little bit. It can move. And then we'll close the eyes if that's comfortable for you. And then just take a, take a deep breath down low into your abdomen, into your pelvic area. So you're really using your diaphragm. And take a couple breaths like that where you're just exploring how low could I take my breath? Can I feel my lower back expanding a little bit? Can you even relax enough and feel the pelvic floor expanding a little bit? And then while you're doing that, see if you can relax your jaw a little bit, a little bit more. And continue to breathe like this, expanding the breath low. And then at some point when you notice like that feels comfortable and you feel full in the breath going low, you can allow it to expand more and then also let it flow up into the heart area. So just to be clearer, you expand down when you breathe in and the whole pelvis expands. And then as the breath continues to keep coming in, it moves into the heart because it needs more space. And so you're expanding into the back of the body, the sides of the body, the front of the body. And the shoulders soft and the jaw soft and the neck supple. You can even just give a little, a little tiny bit of movement now in your body. Just move your fingers and your wrists, move your shoulders, move your spine a little bit. You can go side to side or front to back or both. And you're breathing and exploring the breath. downward and outward. Wiggle your toes a little bit, maybe move your ankles around. And then back to a place that's a little more still, but still just noticing, trying to keep your attention in your body. So now I want you to allow your your mind to float a little bit, to, to feel like um, in a creative way to be able to stretch itself and see if you can float into the future a little bit. Imagine that you continue to hold on to these habits and you got more in tune with your intuition and your what your body needs and wants and that a year from now what could be possible for you and so let your let your mind just kind of or if a year feels too far you could also make it you know three more weeks from now or a month or three months 
whatever feels like a, a doable stretch for your imagination. So you keep breathing and you just stretch into like, what would be possible? How much better might I feel in my body? If I continue to listen and to follow what my body's asking for. If you continue to grow your Agni, your digestive fire, to keep it strong. Imagine what level of health is possible and immunity and strength and suppleness in the body. And then imagine if you felt that different, what, your, what else might shift in your world? How might that affect your relationships? Just again, just letting the mind freely imagine and wonder. Imagine what it would feel like, what it would look like. What it would be like. So, and, and you can imagine yourself, you know, whatever timeline you're working with, whether it's one month, three months, or a year in the future, that this version of you is wiser. And see if you can almost now that you've, that you have this, you could say this image or this, this future self of you that's flushed out a little bit and what this future self might be feeling or thinking or experiencing in life. And now imagine that you took that future self and you brought it right here and like transposed it with your physical being right now. And just allow yourself to experience that in this moment. And with that comes a sense of accomplishment, a sense of confidence a sense of ease because it's already here. And just take a few more deep breaths, really settling into and allowing yourself to feel that the future template of you. And then just feeling a sense of gratitude arise. Gratitude for the steps you've taken. Gratitude for this amazing body that is so responsive. Gratitude for your ability to imagine and create. And let's place a hand on your heart maybe another hand on your on your lower belly and again just breathing into this body right here in this space and then 
letting the eyes look downward, just flutter them open, flutter your eyelids open and let yourself look around the room. Just noticing what you notice. Stretching your eyes a little bit. Blinking a few times and then when you're ready, maybe you need a drink of water or something, but when you're ready, coming back. Ah. Yeah. How was that for you? Wonderful. Very relaxing. Good. I hope also empowering a little bit to, to like, to feel like how much control you do have, you know, and, and, you know, just sometimes we get so focused on, you know, what we're doing now or what we're doing next week, even, but like to look further into the future and to be able to imagine what you want to be is like we talked about before, like that's the subtle that that's the subtle work that is how we begin to create that so it's really it's so simple but it has immense potential for really bringing things in to reality yeah is it did you want to say something Lori no okay okay it, it just has been a really nice experience so thank you <laughs> yeah i'm glad um yes i did is does anybody have any questions right now about anything no? okay i did want to mention that one of the things that i'm going to be doing i've done in the past but it's been several years since i've since i've picked it up again, since I've led one of these, but um, not the cleanse, but I'm going to be teaching an Ayurveda course. And um, it's, it's not like a pure, it, it's a personal evolution Ayurveda course. It's not like a, you know, Ayurveda certification or something like that, but it's more about um, living Ayurveda, like li living the Ayurveda um, and learning like the kind of the work that we're doing, but going just deeper into like the personal work of, you know, these habits and Ayurveda, the word or in Sanskrit, the word that is used is Dinacharya. And it means like your daily habits, your daily routine. And it's like, it's how it's the biggest piece to the puzzle of how to live a healthy, happy um, life you know, harmonious life is taking care of ourselves, which is something we didn't usually learn <laughs> how to do until later in life. And so, um, so that's what we're going to be focusing on. And I'll be, I'll let you know, but I'm going to be doing like a free webinar coming up this month. I'll, I'm going to actually do two of them, I think, just to like talk about some of the stuff and, um, outline the course a little bit. And, um, and then planning on starting the course in June. So it's a, tw it's a 12 week thing, kind of like this. We have the first week is an orientation that really is not getting into the, the, um, to the meat and bones of it yet, but really getting into like what you need to know to be successful with following through. And then the last week is a closure call. So it's, it's 10, weeks in between of different habits to, to work on. And, and it's really pretty, um, pretty amazing. And then that would land us back around, um, around the time getting close to the fall, um, detox. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up and know that that's coming down the pipeline. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. So, um, anything like what? What's your focus going forward right now, like today or this following week? 
anybody have a mine could be is, a word even <laughs> mine is just to get through this mm -hmm. um, cleanse yeah you know i mean it's it's yeah i'm excited to finish it but i'm enjoying it yeah yeah you you've had a you had like a three week for week one or something <laughs> right <Pretty much>. yeah. <laughs> so, so like you it's been longer for you but i'm so i'm so impressed that you're that you've stuck with it for this long you know being that the first week was so long so you're you're really being on top of it thanks yeah i think i'm just going to focus on being intentional and um, I mean, my life gets pretty harried. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of people who tap into me and sometimes, you know, it, it gets overwhelming, but yeah. anyway, I mean, just to, you know, have a balance. And I think, you know, it's with what I eat. It's, you know, the, mm -hmm. the you know, we, I live in a community that just have these power athletes and there's a lot of pressure to like, just be super people and mm -hmm. uh, you know again I, I don't do that I, I I know myself well enough that uh, I don't have to go into that game but anyway you know balance exercise yeah and helping people and you know I usually am the last one that gets any care so this has been um, a really good process for me just yeah like, okay you're worth it too <laughs> yes yeah. otherwise like you wouldn't be so valuable to so many people, right? <laughs> like that, I mean, that's like an outer, we need, we need our like source of validation and like, you know, to be in internal, but it's nice to see like, wow, all of these people depend on you because you have value for them, you know? And then how do we also remember that we have value for ourselves? Yeah. 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 Very no, cool. Great. I love that but, being intentional. Mm -hmm. That's great. Wow. Well, feel free to reach out to me still. Cause you're, you know, um, and I, I'm still here. So feel free to reach out to me personally or in the group and, you know, I will keep you posted on, on what I'm doing next. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank I you. It's been so I nice have... meeting you. Okay. I'm going to sign off. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Lori. Okay. I bye have bye. a quick question. Okay. Are you, are you going to keep that hub up for a while? I will. Okay. Yeah. Because I've been enjoying the meditations that you put oh, on. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. There's actually, I have another page that, um, I forget about using, but I, I do. Yes, I will keep that up for a while. But I, ha I do have another page that sometimes I share with people that's got a few more on it. It's got a couple videos too. Um, oh. Yeah, it's just like some random things that I, that I did for other purposes, but just little, little things. So at some point, I'll probably share that with you too. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. All Thank right. you. I'll see yeah. you on Wednesday. Yes. I look and forward I'll, to it. I'll be calling the office today to check out that massage. Yeah. Yeah. Do. All okay. right. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Have Bye. a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.